open up here at home. Uh, a lot of kids didn't compete last week at the Abilene Christian Meet, and so we've got many more kids on our team that are just now getting going, and uh, just always love to run at home. Uh, how many of those guys that I guess competed maybe in the NCAA National Championship for the indoors are going to be back this week? Or is that still kind of a steady progression? To get everybody? You know, I think 95 to maybe 98 percent will compete in one thing or so. We're, we're really going to work them hard at Texas Relays, which is next week, and we leave on Wednesday, so it's a real short week. So being real careful, uh, not going to run maybe more relays here to practice once or twice, and then. Uh, and some of them are going to do their individual events, but a lot of them will open up at Texas Relays. June the 10th is a long way to see NCAA championships. And, and you've run seven, eight indoor meets, and then we're, we're trying to get a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks for some of them. But uh, we're going to have 98 to 99% probably of the whole team competing. When you go from you know the indoors being as quick as they are to the outdoors being as long as they are, how do you rein in some of your athletes that might be still chomping at the bit fresh off the indoors? Yeah, it's some of them are, are tired, some of them aren't. Some of them, you know, especially if you just finished at the Big 12, you are chomping to get going. If you're a discus thrower, if you're a javelin thrower, if you're on the four by one, those are all events that we didn't have indoors. So those people are really ready. They were doing handoffs yesterday and excited to, to get that going. Uh, David Robertson, you had a obviously. Yeah. Well, TCU had a coaching change. They uh, uh, allowed, I think Daryl Anderson uh, released him, and then they spent about a month and a half waiting to hire a coach. And in that time, he was not guaranteed that his coach was going to be able to get on, be back on, so he got on the court and then contacted us, and that's really how it happened. And then they did hire back his coach about two weeks later that had been there, but he'd already committed here. And, I think he wanted to be on, on a little bit more of an all-around team. As, as the season progresses, we talked we talked about the Big 12 how it's a great turnaround, you bang, 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 and then you're there and then nationals and you're done. How is outdoors different? Well, it's it's a lot different. You know, we've been running everything short, tight, tight 200 meter turns. Now we get to get outside where it's wide oval and a lot more room. The 60 meters now become 100 meters. 60 meter hurdles become 110s and 100s. It's just a whole different mindset. You have to really accelerate. And indoors, you got five weeks to qualify for nationals. We don't have that problem outdoors. We just have to be one of the top 48 in that event in the West region to go to the NCAA first round. So it takes a lot of pressure off to do things more properly. What stood out to you when you came here before coming to Texas Tech? Uh, first thing, you know, you notice is the facilities, you know, like they're really nice. And, um, you know, you kind of see that, you know, each thrower, you know, that comes here is, you know, pretty good, pretty talented, and they're consistent. And, um, you know, that was one of the things that I was looking to, you know, better with myself, um, you know, be more confident. And, uh, you know, just having that good training under your belt, um, you know, when you pair hard work and consistency and talent, you know, the ceiling, Gets raised, so you know, that's what I was trying to do. So, well, talk, talk, was, was, <laughs> go ahead, Sean. <laughs> go ahead, Sean. <laughs> you talk about the swagger. How has the team accepted you bringing you in and bringing you as part of you know the swagger of the state? Uh, you know, I think from day one, even when uh, you know, on my official visit here, I think everybody welcomed me with open arms, and uh, you know, Coach Kitley and Coach Falcons you know, made it clear of you know how I can contribute. And, team and um, you know I think that I'm a pretty confident person and I think that um, you know, being paired with a bunch of talent around here and um, you know, just being in this environment I think that I would fit in pretty good and you know, just add to the depth of this team so with with that being said what does your coach and coach Kitley offer that you may not have seen in the past that, that has allowed you to grow up um, just like those deep roots in throwing you know coach Falcons um, you know he was a uh, a double national champ when he was here, and, um, or not when he was here, but whenever he was in college. And um, you know, Coach Kelly is you know very established. He's a very well-known you know coach with a lot of success. And so um, you know, I just think that you know if you see that, um, you know, you want to you know be coached under those guys, and you know you want to get to be you know part of the list of athletes that's been successful here. And, you know, I think that they set you up for you know, a possible career afterwards. And, 
So you know, I think it was pretty simple. So. Wes said you called. Uh, Wes said you called. Uh, what was that recruiting process like? Did you recruit Tech as much as they recruited you? So um, yeah, Tech was definitely um, on you know, one of the top of my list. Um, um, it was a pretty quick process. Um, I think you know during the summer, I think you know he called me on a like a Wednesday night, you know, and I was on a flight here Friday morning. So it was a pretty quick process, and you know I think as soon as I got here, um, I was you know impressed off rip, uh, you know, with the academics, you know, what resources they provide, and um, you know obviously the facilities. But not only that, it was the plan that you know they had for me and like the vision and um, you know, their ambition level kind of matched mine. And, uh, you know, like they were very clear of, you know, what they think I could do and kind of match with what I think I'm capable of. And so I just think, you know, from the very jump, I think we're on the same page. And, you know, you know canceled visits, you know, I think it was a very, very clear choice for me. So. Who else offered you visits? Um, I had visits to Kansas State, Iowa State, Kentucky. Uh, there were a few other schools that were in contact, but, um, I didn't get visits at the beginning. Like, this was the first visit that I took, and you know, as soon as I left here, I was like, you know, I don't, I don't need to see anything else. You know, this is where I wanted to be. So, were you surprised when after Wes said kind of coaching change, this what sort of put you made you available again? But how did that affect you when you found out that uh, there's going to be a staff? Yeah, so um, you know, when that happened, um, I think it was like the day before the transfer portal closed. And, you know, I'd obviously come off a good year. And um, you know, I think that I was, you know, progressing when I was at TCU, and it was just kind of like a last-minute thing. And um, you know, I think I had like 11 hours to kind of decide to you know, put my name in. But um, you know, I just think that it was kind of um, like a last-minute, unfortunate you know, kind of turn of events. But um, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, I think that I wanted to be here in the end, so I think it all worked out in a good way. I still have a lot of respect for. You know, those guys, they always have my best interest in mind. So, um, you know, I think they kind of revived my career a little bit. So, um, nothing but respect. What made you uh, decide to leave Mizzou for TCU? Uh, Mizzou, I just think that um, uh, my first two years, I didn't really make any noise, you know, in college. And um, I think that I was capable of so much more. And so I think I just needed to change. Um, you know, there's no, you know, bad blood or anything. Um, I just needed a, a change. And, I think that I was capable of so much more, and um, you know, when I left, um, I didn't prove. So that's you know, what I was looking for. So, and I was going to say, looking at your results, you made a pretty big jump last year from the previous year. Did you sharpen up technique, or what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think it was sharpen up technique, but uh, I think it was you know also training, uh, weight room. You know, I got um, a lot stronger, and I think it was you know different mental approach. Um, you know, I think approaching practice and approaching meets and your mindset, you know, I think it changed to where, you know, I was going into meets, uh, you know, not worried about everybody else. I was just competing with myself, you know, just knowing that, you know, I'm technically sound and I can get in the ring and do what I need to do, you know, rather than, you know, going in and thinking I need to do this and that. You know, I'm just thinking of how far I'm going to smack this thing. So, what's your height? Um, six four, two fifty. Six four. So, beginning of the season, um, I came home a little later than everybody else because um, I had some family tr family troubles at home, um, which were hard to go into the season with. Um, but I had my friends here who were so supportive, and Coach Rob and Coach G, um, who were there for us all the time. Uh, so the practice and everything went well, and then I got better from meet to meet, and um, yeah, I. It just went really well in the end, and I broke my own record, which I did my freshman year, so it was time to break it again. Um, How has fighting over and overcoming adversity made you stronger, a stronger person for, for what's going on right now? What do you mean for what's going on right now? Well, a new year. A new, you have to start start again and start to, to re-qualify and to you know, a new year to 
meet your goals and or exceed, exceed, exceed them. It's exciting because if you're an athlete and you have that athlete mentality, you want to get better every year. And even if you run a PR in a competition, you're still not going to be completely satisfied because you know you want to reach that next step, that next step of being better, of getting a better time, of getting stronger and everything. So I'm excited. I'm excited for this season and yeah. You've had uh, success at, on the 600 indoor and the 400 hurdles outdoor. Which of those events do you kind of like best or think is kind of your specialty? Uh, I love the 400 hurdles. Um, that's also what I came here to do. I'm not a um, loving indoor person because the 600 yards is just a thing that is run in the Big 12 and we can't go further than Big 12s um, with 600 yards. So I'm very excited for outdoor um, to finally run the 400 hurdles. Do you have a sense for how much improvement you could make from where you, where you finished off last year in 400 hurdles to what you can do this season? Honestly, I'm excited to see that myself because I'm um, a lot more fit than I was last year. I'm stronger than I was last year. Um, so we'll see how I open up this weekend and then just go for like for on from there. You've been a, oh, go ahead, Marcia. You've been a silver medalist in that event. You've set two of your last year personal bests in that 400 meter. What's your biggest personal goal coming into this year? Build upon all that. Um, of course, it's going to be to set another PR for myself. Um, but honestly, I want to enjoy this season. I want to be satisfied with the race when I get off that track and run a PR. And even if I don't run a PR, I don't want to be too hard on myself because I've been doing that the past year. And um, I don't know, it's because I'm a perfectionist and I want to you know, have everything my way, but I need to accept that it's not always going to be that easy. Um, but that's what's also awesome here because we get to work with our sports psychiatrist and everything and they teach us to you know, be happy with uh, everything we have and what we have here and yeah, just be thankful. What was your recruiting, uh, what brought you to Texas Tech, considering you're from overseas? Uh, so in 2018, um, I went to World Championships with one of the other guys who's actually here, or a few of the other guys who's over here. Um, they were in Finland, and I ran the 400 hurdles there. And then in 2019, um, I had a recruitment firm um, called Scholarbook. Um, I worked with them and they um, reached out and put me in the portal and um, a few colleges reached out to me. Um, I'm not going to name them. <laughs> okay, so uh, there was Texas Tech, Baylor, Washington State um, and some other ones and I didn't get to come on a visit because it was just um, too short notice to come on a visit. So I went with my gut feeling and I wanted to be a fearless champion. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what makes this your teammates, and who, who do you hang out with, and who are the people that you that are you tightest with? Um, so we have two Germans on the team, and I'm from Germany, so that's kind of my uh, best friends on the team, I'd say. Um, and I had um, a few teammates who graduated already who are still at the university working with us or um, still here working um, at the medical center or something. Uh, that's a lot of people I hang out with. I can't name the names, but yeah. <laughs> um, had you been to the States? When was your first time to come to the US, United States? It was the year prior, um, before I didn't even know that I wanted to come to the U.S. and run here. I went to go visit some friends um, at UTSA, actually, but just to go visit and see the U.S. because I just graduated from like high school and I wanted to see what it's all about, why everybody is so hyped about USA. And <laughs> so you obviously have no language barrier. Uh, when did you start speaking English? So we learn to speak English um, from the day we go to in the first grade. Um, but I was born and raised in South Africa and then moved to Germany when I was 16. So I have um, dual citizenship. Oh. And so South, so you, so when you said first grade, you're talking about South Africa. English, yeah. English, yeah. Okay. So basically I grew up like speaking three languages. English, German, and? Afrikaans. Okay. That's like Dutch. Okay. 